Hello again, Rabbi. Morning, Joe. So I know what a fan you are of New England and the Patriots, and the Super Bowl is coming up. Unfortunately, it will come up without Monsieur Brady. Is that correct? That's correct. One year too many, perhaps, or he finally realized he can't carry the uh, team he was on. He should have stayed in New England or left when he ended his tenure there. We always wonder, you know, when's a good time to quit? I know cartoonists are always wondering when they should stop doing something. Bill Watterson is the most famous example of that. What is your wisdom on knowing when to lay down, when to retire? You'll notice my sign. This is to remind us that nothing is permanent. And sometimes a sign like this scares us because we think it's the imminence and we don't want to confront it or we think it's a, a not a prediction, but it's going to cause something. And, you know, we're going to do a session we'll do a broadcast on correlation and causation too often we confuse them just because i have the sign doesn't mean i'm causing anything it's just a reminder and isn't that what signs are about speed limit 55 65 what's the speed limit on the beltway i've been doing 55 60 65 and past like i'm standing still so evidently or God only knows the speed limit, even if there are warning signs. So one of the warning signs is everything comes to an end. You know, all good things must end, all bad things end. Nothing's permanent. And this really is a trouble, a problem for us as human beings, because we think in terms of infinity that we're going to last forever. Betty White, all of a sudden, it, she died because she lived. Not because of any external factors. And after a while, uh, Ruth Gator Beta Ginsburg. Again, we think of some people as, well, they're going to live forever. And then we have trouble when they die, rather than acknowledging, enjoying people while they're there and recognizing even our lives end. And so our careers end. And there comes a time when we have to stop and evaluate our behavior, our performance, how we treat our partners, what's going on in the universe. And why don't we go out on a high note? You know, it's really very sad because there are boxers, there are baseball, football, basketball, there are actors and actresses. We know these people that shouldn't have done one more movie, a bridge too far. They shouldn't have played in one more game. They shouldn't have pitched one more pitch because we remember them because of their bad performance and we lose how great they were. And then we have to keep reminding ourselves how great something was. And the same thing in our personal lives. When is it time for me to retire? When is it time for me to leave? Well, I was with the VA for 40 years. Moses spent 40 days and 40 nights on the mountain receiving the commandments. It rained for 40 days and 40 nights. The prophet spent 40 days in the wilderness. So I said to myself, who am I to outdo Moses's track record? Moses only made it for 40. I'm done. It's time. Rather retire when I'm doing well. That's very difficult because we like to think of ourselves as going on forever on the same level. And in sports, it's more of a problem because sports depend on our bodies and our abilities. But sports also determine or show you very quickly that your body is not up to the task of performance because sports so often have a winner and a loser. But in acting, in the arts, you can say, oh, he didn't have as good a performance as he could have, but he's getting up there too, he's too old. Betty Davis famously kept performing way past the time when everybody thought she should, 
But that happened at several points in her career when she thought, what about Eve? They thought that's her last picture. And then whatever happened to baby Jane came along. Right, right. right. Um, but I'm not, this isn't hard and fast. That's the difficulty. It requires an evaluation. You have to talk to other people. You have to look at your own performance and you have to be honest with yourself. And to say, I want to go out on a high note, maybe I'd be fine. Maybe I could do another great performance. However, it's also possible if I'm actually thinking that my performance is slipping, there's your key, Joe. That's the time to retire. When I recognize that I'm being short with some of my fellow chaplains, when I'm snapping at my own patients, I go, wow, it's time to go. I recognize in myself that it's time even though I still could, could continue. And we, we hold the key within ourselves. But there is that factor of, as you said, quitting while you're ahead. And uh, I know when I'm playing cards and I'm winning, that's how Las Vegas works because nobody wants to quit while they're winning. They wanna that's keep right. playing. And that's how they make, Las Vegas makes its money. But Bill Watterson, as I mentioned before, did not want Calvin and Hobbes to be a Peanuts type environment. He didn't want to see Calvin dolls and Hobbes tiger dolls wherever he went in stores. He wanted, he wanted it remembered as a successful, beautiful strip, which it was and still is, but not a week goes by when people don't clamor for some more of that strip or imitators come along and try and see some of that glory. Is it, can Bill Watterson be sitting there wondering, you know, maybe I should bring it back? Joe, you just said the old adage, <clears throat> better to retire when your audience wants more than you're performing and the audience, and the audience wants less. That's, that's our goal. I don't want to wait with my preaching or doing these segments until people yawn or make comments or say negative things. I'd much rather that you and I stop when people want us to do more. That's the goal. Not to wait until you can't pass the ball anymore, till you're not quite your eyesight, your eye-hand coordination. It's not the same at 44 as it was at 21. You're still great. You're still good. It's just not enough for the sport you're in. And look at the newscasters for the NFL and the AFL. Look at the sports. There's always two or three people reporting on the game one former player and some a sports announcer, and they're great together. And these are figures that left the game at the height of their game. And they know plays, they can talk about it. They have an expertise, but they can't play it anymore. And that's what we're looking at in terms of retirement. When I can acknowledge I'm at the, I'm at the high point and I'm okay, because I want people to ask me to do more rather than ask me to do less. The end is near, Joe. Yes, I remember Cary Grant. Everybody wanted him to make more movies and he said, no, I'd rather not. And Fred Astaire, I think, famously stopped dancing at a certain point because he couldn't make a few steps. But to make it personal, we're talking about famous people and athletes doing extraordinary things and not working at the peak of their performance. When do we decide, you know, I'm too old to drive anymore or you know, I should hire somebody to hang that shutter because I shouldn't be up on a ladder anymore. How do we evaluate ourselves on that level? I've adjusted to that very, very well. We call PPD, prop the, uh, the property division, and we get a plumber, electrician, or a carpenter, and they go under the sink, they hang things up, they change the wiring. All things I used to do when I was younger. But I recognize with the osteoarthritis, I don't have the dexterity. 75, I don't have the balance. And looking at it, I'm going, I'm not going up that ladder. I'm not doing that. There is, I can hire someone and thank God I can afford to pay someone to do those things. It comes from doing a self-evaluation and overriding your hubris, to be honest. 
and say, yeah, I did that when I was younger. And thank God I can afford to have someone else do that now. Why take the chances? And that's a hard decision. It's the same as when I left the VA after 40 years, I decided it was time. And with driving, that's one of the most difficult. We have too many seniors who shouldn't be driving and there's no need to drive. We have Uber, we have taxi cabs, we have driver services, we have Lyft. And it turns out if you do the math, it's cheaper when you're retired or a senior at some point to hire a service than it is to buy a car, pay for a car, pay for insurance, you do the math. It turns out you can afford a lot of rides and you're not doing as much riding, but the actions in here, clipping my wings, I won't have freedom. We, we have to stop and do an evaluation and say, it's not safe for me to try. Look, I had cataract surgery four years ago. And as everyone says with cataract surgery, you will know when it's time because you'll know it's time. And when I, I was driving at night in the rain and I realized I was having trouble staying, keeping the road and the taillights. I said, I called immediately the next day and I had cataract surgery. And it's acknowledging that it's time, but it's all we have to have these conversations with ourselves and we have to listen to our children when they say, dad, you shouldn't be driving anymore. And it's not safe for you. You're going to kill somebody else. And sometimes it takes these dramatic moments to get us to stop playing ball, to stop acting. Seniors have an automobile accident and then they stop driving. They should have stopped four years before. So that's my message. That's what I want to bring out there that let's take a look at when it's time and you know when it's time and you have to just acknowledge it's not a weakness because it's inevitable. There will come a time when I won't be able to drive anymore. Well, I know one thing that will eventually end, but I'm not looking forward to it, is our time together, Rabbi. I hope we continue to do these little broadcasts for a long time to come. To make you feel better, in the Olam Haba, in the world to come, you and I will still be broadcasting, Joe. <laughs>